Hey y'all, it's Dawn, and I'm so glad you're back. I've got another fun, budget-friendly DIY video for you today. This is a little side table I picked up in my neighborhood before the trash man got to it. It had a missing leg, and the bottom drawer was messed up. But I still had an idea in my head to give it a beautiful transformation. It was still cold outside, so I brought it indoors to start working on it. The hubby didn't like that too much when he got home. <laughs> I started by removing the bottom drawer to see if I could repair it. I also removed the two other drawers. I then used a mixture of water and bleach to clean the entire piece. And let me tell you, it was nasty. I removed the bottom from the piece so I could get the old legs off. I scuffed sanded the piece with the 220 grit sandpaper. and then wiped it down again to remove the dust. I also removed the hardware from the drawers and sanded them. and then replace the bottom. I attach the new feet by using star bond adhesive. I added the top two drawers back to the table, but the bottom drawer was too far gone to be able to repair. I went ahead and added a layer of primer to the piece. I didn't paint the top because it's in pretty rough shape and will need to be repaired. I'll have to wait for that until I'm outdoors. A few days later, it was warm enough to finish it outdoors. And yeah, we need to cut the grass, but between the rain and the fact that our lawnmower has decided it wants some attention, I haven't been able to cut it. Cutting grass is the one thing I don't like about spring. I began by using my sander to smooth out the top and to rough up the primer. The top had some water damage and the MDF board was showing. 
I used wood filler to cover these areas, and once it was dry, I sanded it smooth. I decided to remove the two drawers before painting the piece. I used Rust-Oleum White Flat Spray Paint to spray the drawers. I used thin layers at a time to avoid any drips or runs and let the drawers dry completely between each coat. Once the wood filler was dry, I used my palm sander to smooth it out and then hand sanded the areas it didn't fit into. I cleaned the top to remove all the dust. I used Folk Art Castle Chalk Paint for the top. I used a brush around the edges first and then used a roller on the entire top. Me, personally, I prefer using a roller to minimize the brush strokes. I wanted the top surface to be as smooth as possible. I gave the piece two coats and sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper. I applied a layer of Chalk Couture Surface Wax to the top. And then applied this Chalk Couture stencil. I think this stencil is so beautiful and I love the farmhouse tile. This is the biggest piece I have tried to use a stencil on. So let's just keep our fingers crossed that it turns out the way I see it in my head. I placed painter's tape around the edges that I didn't want to get paste on. and made sure the stencil was stuck down with no air bubbles using a roller. I applied a layer of Chalk Couture Black Velvet Chalk Paste to the stencil. Okay, now let's hold our breath to see how it turns out. I love it. It looks exactly like I was hoping it would. Once the top was completely dry, I covered it with some craft paper and began spray painting the rest of the piece. I used several thin coats of paint so I wouldn't get any runs in the paint. I 
I applied a layer of wax paste to the entire piece. And oh my God, I can't believe how amazing this piece turned out. It is so beautiful. And the stencil on top turned out amazing. I can't believe I was able to transform this piece of trash into a unique, one-of-a-kind piece of furniture. Let me know what you think in the comments. Here's another found in my stash project. I found these three old books, which I must have gotten at Goodwill. I thought it would be cute to create an actual book stack with them. I placed the largest book on the bottom and worked my way up to the smallest book. I used a piece of twine and wrapped it around the book several times. and then just tied a bow at the top. Talking about simple. This is the simplest DIY ever. <laughs> All you have to do is find some old books and decorate your home in this farmhouse style. I think they turned out perfect. I picked up this lantern wax warmer recently at a thrift store. It was cute just the way it was but it doesn't match my decor. So I had to farmhouse it up some. <laughs> the first thing I did was remove all the glass inserts. I used my favorite chalk paint, Waverly Plaster, and painted the entire lantern, even the inside. And of course, use my hot air gun to dry it. If you are a crafter and don't have a hot air gun, you are really missing out. I'll leave a link to the hot air gun I use daily in the description. If you would like to help support my channel and help me continue to make DIYs for you, please consider buying me a coffee. All the information is in the description box below. Now back to the DIYs. I then used Waverly Elephant Chalk Paint to distress the lantern. I lightly loaded the paint on a fan brush and then dabbed it on a paper towel before painting it onto the lantern. I did this around the entire lantern, inside and out. The glass inserts had some wax on them, so I used a razor blade and removed the wax. I then put the glass in the dishwasher and washed them. I reinserted the glass into the lantern and used a pair of pliers to get the tags folded back over to hold the glass into place. While I was doing all this, I took the top of the lantern and the tray the wax goes into outside and spray painted them 
with a heat resistant black paint. This is another surprise for my stash. I had forgotten all about this cute wood and grass basket. I had to get rid of the David and Harry on the sides. It was actually engraved into the wood. I used spackling and applied it to the basket with my finger. And then used a scraper to smooth it out as much as possible. Once it was dry, I used 220 grit sandpaper wrapped around a scrap block of wood to sand the spackling flat with the basket. The block keeps the sandpaper flat so you don't have any type of indentions when you're complete. I used the nozzle for my air compressor to help remove the dust from the basket. It really helped to remove the dust between the pieces of grass on the basket. I then used Awesome Cleaner and a rag to clean it up before painting. For the wood portion of the basket, I used Rust-Oleum Weathered Gray Chalk Paint. and painted the grass part with Waverly white chalk paint. I did a messy paint job because I wasn't worried about full coverage, but dry brushing would have left it lighter than I wanted. To finish the basket, I applied little legs to the bottom of the four corners with hot glue. Me and my indecisiveness wound up going back and painting all the wood with Waverly Elephant chalk paint, and I think that was the right choice. As an afterthought, I cut out this cut file from Design Bundles and applied it to the wood at the top of the basket. I can't believe how stinking cute this basket turned out, and the little legs sent it over the top. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please take a second to like this video and leave me a comment. This really helps my channel to grow so others, just like yourself, can find me. If you just found me, I hope you will join our little family by hitting the subscribe button. If you are already part of the family, thank you so much for your love and support. Y'all are the absolute best. Check out my new Amazon store for craft supply and farmhouse home decor recommendations. All the products I use from Amazon in my videos can be found there. Until next time, happy crafting!